Iowa versus Wisconsin. Your two favorite teams to talk about on this channel. Chris, One. tell us a little right. Talk, <laughs> tell us a little bit about the Wisconsin man over there. Good, good. I could leave it back to you for the Iowa team. I know that you're super high on this year. Uh, Wisconsin, though, four and one. You know, here's the thing with Wisconsin. I, I've had to battle Christian. Me and Christian have gotten into it over Wisconsin all offseason. Uh, so far this season, they're four and one, though. You know, the only loss is to Washington State. You know, and, and Washington State obviously is a pretty good team this year in the Pac-12. But um, <laughs> here's the thing in this game. This game is going to be – this is a kind of a weird game. We're talking about Big Ten West teams here, though. Can Wisconsin move the ball against Iowa's top 20 defense? I, obviously, we all know Iowa's defense is always really good every single year. Um, but can they move the ball? You know, with Chaz Molesky hurt for the year, Braylon Allen, who I love to death, He's gonna, you know, he's gonna, he's been carrying the load. He's gonna have to continue carrying the load for that Wisconsin offense in the ground and pound. You know, he's averaging six and a half yards per carry. Chris, he's got seven TDs on the year. It's not bad. Uh, Christian's favorite guy, Tanner Mordecai, hasn't looked elite. I had to say it. Um, hasn't looked elite um, by any stretch of imagination. And he's gonna be tested at this one. This will probably be the best defense that obviously Wisconsin's played all year. Um, hopefully he can complete some passes in this one. I, I, I'm a little worried about this, but he's got over a thousand yards passing Christian. He's only got three TDs and three interceptions on the year. Now that is not probably what Wisconsin fans were expecting when they got this kid from SMU, but that's the stats. Now I will say this though, in his defense, partially Wisconsin leads the country and drop passes. They haven't gotten any help on the outside with the receivers. I've watched him play a couple times. I mean, some of those guys are open. He's making the passes. Guys are just dropping the balls. Um, you look like the Ravens against the Pittsburgh Steelers last week with like eight or nine per game. It's pretty ugly. But defensively, though, Christian, I'll say this. Wisconsin's looking better week in and week out. Wisconsin's been known as a good, you know, obviously defensive team. They didn't start the season off that way. They've looked better, though. Um, I would have to consider that they look really good this week, and maybe you'll make the case for the Iowa man. But Iowa's offense is atrocious. Um, any idiot knows that. I would like to think that they can, you know, hold Iowa to a certain amount of points here, and I would assume it'd be pretty low. So I'm going to kick it over to you for your team and where you work in the state of Iowa. Uh, let me have it. Yeah, it's going to be a little lengthy one right here. We don't really talk about Iowa too much on the channel. We, we do every now and again when we want to feel good about our team's offense. Um, here's the thing, Chris. I mean, Iowa comes in this matchup against Wisconsin, the same as it always does. Uh, questions on the offensive side of the ball, and I mean, they're really gonna—they're really leaning on their defense. I mean, Iowa right now defensively ranks 29th in total defense and 55th in rushing defense. Okay, they're giving up 131 yards uh, rushing a game, which Wisconsin and Braylon Allen do very well. We know that. If Iowa needed a game to step up and shut out a rushing attack, it's this week, okay? Because I think if they can limit them on the ground, I think the Hawks secondary versus Tanner Mordecai, that might be pretty favorable, honestly. Um, but, you know, offensively, Chris, they rank dead last in total offense. I'm not making that up. They rank dead last in total offense. Chris, I, I can't remember a coordinator at the major Power 5 level that for two years in a row finished almost last in every category, they got to keep their job. I, I can't. In recent memory, I can't think about no, it. No, you're right. I mean, Todd Grantham I don't think lasted that long at Florida or or really most of the places he's been. I know Gator Swag will tell us. Let's go. <laughs> but here's the other thing. I mean, other than the fact that it's Ferentz's son, I, I'd keep him on staff and look outside for the next OC, right? That way it's a win-win. If Ferentz gets yeah. to keep his job, little Ferentz gets to have a job, and you get to fix the offense, right? That's probably what we're going to look to do. I mean, Chris, I was currently rocking with a former Wisconsin quarterback in Deacon Hill who has a 37.5 completion percentage this year. 37.5. He drops back and throws nine passes. He's probably going to connect on three of them. I mean, he was 6 of 21 against a not-so-great Purdue defense, Chris. Can he play any better against his former team? I I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'll just say this. It's going to be a very Big Ten score. Uh, Iowa 10, Wisconsin 21. Jesus Christ, we're almost spot on. Give me Iowa 10, <laughs> Wisconsin 24. Holy <laughs> shit. 